artist. Ever since I can remember, I would sit at the kitchen table for hours and hours and just make anything out of paper, string, cotton, you name it. For instance, I had a couple aunts who smoked cigarettes and I made a pack of cigarettes full of little paper cigarettes and a lighter and you would press down on the lighter and a little flame would pop up. So I was always super creative and crafty and always liked to work with different materials. I think deep down I knew I was an artist too because I was always a little different. I was always considered the weird one among friends and I was always a bit socially awkward and introverted. <laughs> a lot of us artists are introverted and, and weird, right? <laughs> right? When I was about seven or eight years old, my parents gifted me an art easel and that changed a lot for me. I, I think at that point I was like, I'm a real artist now. And I actually wrote a letter to my brother saying that I could no longer care for our family dog because I had to focus on my art. <laughs> Which is really hilarious to anybody who personally knows me because I am such an animal lover and our two dogs are like my children. As I got older, I kind of lost touch with art and I got into photography. I picked up my mom's old Canon AE-1 from the 70s and started shooting film. My friends and I actually made, uh, we sort of had this camera club and we would go visit abandoned houses and farms and take pictures of the natural decay of these old buildings and nature just taking its course. I think that that kind of really started to inspire me. I actually took the doors off of some of the hinges of these abandoned places and I would bring them home and I would paint on these old, big, beautiful antique doors. And that's when I started getting back into to painting a little bit. But I was still very much into photography and I shot for a couple of years and then was hired by local newspapers as a freelancer. One of the best jobs I ever had, it was so much fun. I was sent all over for different assignments, capturing different stories spontaneously. And it really kind of taught me how to just to be in the moment and capture things as they were unfolding. I kept getting requests from friends and family to take portraits and capture different events. And before I knew it, I was starting my own photography business. And it was actually quite successful. My husband actually had to quit his job for a bit and come and help me run the business. But as you can imagine, shooting weddings and baby portraits, it was, as, as much as I loved it, I was getting burnt out and I wanted to be more creative. My husband and I always wanted to move out west and in 2007, we sold our house and moved out to Seattle. Washington is just incredibly beautiful and it was so inspiring just being surrounded by mountains and living near the ocean and waterfalls were just everywhere. And it was so incredibly inspiring. And at that point, I started really getting back into my art. After living in Seattle for a couple years, we moved across the Puget Sound and rented this beautiful little cottage with an art studio on the property. And it was within walking distance to this gorgeous state park. And I spent so many hours in that little art studio just painting away. And that's when I really first started developing my style. 
It was almost as if a magic wand was waved over me as overnight I was clarity and started painting this, these huge, beautiful works of art. And within a couple, well, within a few months, yeah, I had booked my own first solo show. Just living in an area that is so completely beautiful, mountains, waterfalls, the ocean is right there. It changed everything for me. And not only was I incredibly inspired, but I realized the importance of nature and our relationship to nature. I was always a nature and animal lover. Ever since I was a kid, my dad would pull over and we would run out and grab a turtle off the road or raise little baby birds that had fallen out of a nest. We always had such great respect for animals. Moving to the Pacific Northwest and being surrounded by all that beauty not only brought all that back, but just really taught me how fragile our environment is and how vital it is to our own existence and that we need to protect it. So my paintings feed off of this fascination I have with our relationship with nature, both positively and negatively. And I really hope that it, it just inspires people to look at nature with awe again and realize that we have to protect it. I've been painting professionally for over a decade now and my work has been exhibited throughout the U.S. and internationally. I'm happy to have several collectors of my work throughout the country. The support really has been quite tremendous. I'm extremely blessed to live on the beautiful property of one of my art collectors. I found so much inspiration living here with my husband and our two dogs. And my husband is also an artist, an amazing artist. It really feels like I'm on a permanent artist residency tucked away in this beauty with my husband right along my side. Since nature is what drives me to create, I try to paint as much as I can outdoors. Plus, you know, as artists can be pretty messy. So this way I can throw paint around outside on the patio without being concerned of trashing the studio. I'm always exploring different mediums, but I can definitely say that mixed media painting is my main focus. I paint on wood panel and then paper. And for my works on paper, I will sometimes incorporate collage. I literally have boxes of scraps, fragments of work that I didn't use. I don't plan my pieces. My process is very much in the moment, driven by emotion and tapping into the subconscious. I will look at images of details found in nature before I actually jump onto a blank canvas. And whether it's a microscopic view of sea life or the patterns of on the wings of a butterfly, that's where my foundation of my paintings come from. Many people are emotionally stirred by my work. They find it very spiritual. And of course, I find that very humbling when anyone is moved by one of my pieces. But I think it's because my work also has such an ethereal presence to it. And I really believe that the energy we as artists put into our work resonates very much with the viewer. If I can give any advice to anyone aspiring to create for a living, it would be simply to live and breathe art. Make art the center of your world. Get to know other artists, get involved in the community. Create as much as you can 
and explore all different mediums. Don't worry about what others think. Just create.